In this video today, we are going to be talking about comic books that are guaranteed to only increase in value as time goes on. This is happening right here, right now, coming at you. Hello to all of my comic book speculators, Dante D here, and welcome to the channel where we talk about comic books and other geek stuff. Before we get into our video today, I just wanted to remind you all to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so, and the reason being is because we are doing a 10K subscriber giveaway. Basically, the way this works is once this channel hits 10,000 subscribers, we will be giving away some fabulous comic book prizes. If you want to see what is being given away, check out the link in the description to the video which shows off some of the prizes that you could potentially win. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you probably know that I am not much of a comic book speculator. If anything, I've actually stepped away from the collection of comic book back issues just because I don't find it financially feasible for me anymore. And also, I have all the comic books really at this point that I could ever want and afford. So I kind of backed away a little bit from the collection of comic book back issues. But just because I'm not collecting comic book back issues as much doesn't mean that you all out there that are subscribed to this channel or that are watching this channel are not collecting comic books. So this video is for all of you uh, comic book collectors out there that are still really much engaged in collection of comic book back issues. If you've been involved in the comic book collecting world for a while, you know that the prices of comic books ebb and flow and fluctuate like crazy, and it's usually based on um, collector interest. It's all supply and demand, really. But how does interest in a particular comic book issue really get sparked? And the answer to that, quite simply, is whenever there's a new movie announced or a, a, a new show that's announced that's dealing with a particular character, key issues that feature that character will usually skyrocket in price. At the time that this video is being made, one comic book back issue that has garnered a lot of attention lately is uh, the She-Hulk number one. And the reason why this book has skyrocketed in price and has gotten so much attention lately is because there has been a Disney Plus series, I believe, that, that, that was announced uh, not too long ago. So clearly, this book has skyrocketed in price. But is it really worth that much? In my opinion, no, I don't really think it's worth that much. And now probably is not the time to try to add this particular book to your collection. Chances are, once the show is made and all of the hype has died down, the price of this book right now probably will not stay at what it is going for at this particular point in time. There are certain books, however, that you really cannot go wrong with, and these are books that have really stood the test of time. And how can we tell that these books have stood the test of time? Well, if you go into the Overstreet Comic Book Price Guide, you will see that the values of these particular books that I'm gonna be talking about today steadily increasing over the years. Now, of course, there are certain holy grail key issues that clearly will continue to increase in price uh, in coming years just because they're just so significant to pop culture. I'm thinking specifically Action Comics number one, Detective Comics 27, Amazing Fantasy 15. Those are not the types of books that this list is going to be talking about today. The books that you're going to be seeing in this video today are really books that you, they are expensive, I'm not gonna lie. These books are quite pricey to get in the first place. However, they will continue to increase in price and they are reasonably affordable for your average person. And by reasonably affordable, I mean under the $1,000 range, maybe slightly over, something like that. The books that you're going to be seeing in this list today, I have some of them and I will be showing you my personal copies of the ones that I do have, uh, but there are others that I do not have. And I'm not going to be quoting current prices for these books just because the 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 prices of these books change uh so so quickly we're going to start off this list with uncanny x-men number 94 and this is a heavy hitter comic uh for fans of x-men and, and collectors of comic books uh all over the world and this uh, i don't know a lot about this book actually but i believe that the significance of it is is the first appearance of the new team in the uncanny 
X-Men title. Correct me if I'm wrong on this, because this is one of those books I don't know a lot about. I've read it. And I know this is this is an early Chris Claremont story. Chris Claremont is a legendary writer on the Uncanny X-Men and just, just a staple for any collector. Uh, you should be able to get this book for under a thousand. Now again, condition is going to be everything with these types of books here because those really high grade copies are going to be into the thousands of dollars. But uh, lower grade copies are usually you can usually fetch for for a few hundred. I know uh, when I got this one here, it was maybe maybe a few hundred. But uh, as you can see here, I don't know if you could tell on the camera, uh, it is uh, it is not not a near mint whatsoever. It's probably a a, a mid grade, maybe uh, maybe a four or a five. Next book on our list is one I do not have, unfortunately. It is Batman number two thirty two. This is the first appearance of Ra's al Ghul, Ra's al Ghul, whatever you want to call him. And this is art by Neil Adams and story by Denny O'Neill. This was a legendary run on Batman and the first appearance of a major Batman villain. Collectors absolutely love this book. It's from the Bronze Age, uh, but it is a little pricey. I think even lower grade copies of this book will go for about $500. Don't quote me on that. Correct me if I'm wrong. Again, like I said, I'm not by any means uh, an expert on what these books are going for right now. I do not watch the comic book markets, but I know for a fact this is a very sought after book by collectors and you will never go wrong if you add this book to your collection. It will maintain its value and will continue to increase in value. Werewolf by Night number 32. This is another big key issue from the Bronze Age. This is the first appearance of Moon Knight. Personally, I do not understand the hype around this book. Moon Knight to me is not really that significant of a character. However, collectors go crazy after this book. If you know a little bit more about why this book is so popular, please let me know. This book is quite, quite expensive. Mid grade copies are even over $500. Um, it's it, it's quite a, quite an expensive book, but uh, again, you will never go wrong with this. If you drop the money down now for it, it will continue to increase in value in years to come. Wolverine number one. This is the Frank Miller, Chris Claremont run on Wolverine. This is a book that is uh, highly, highly regarded by uh, comic book collectors. And this is the first Wolverine solo series has a legendary cover. Uh, people absolutely love this cover. Uh, this is probably one of the lower cost ones on this list. I mean, it's still expensive. It's probably still in the over hundred dollar range, probably even more than that. Again, I'm, I'm not, uh, up and current on what these books are going for currently. Uh, I've had these, a lot of these books in my collection for, for, Quite a few years now but uh, I, I know for a fact that this book continues to rise in value definitely a staple for any comic book collection and i highly recommend it green lantern green arrow number 76 unfortunately do not have this book really wish i had it in my collection but it has become so expensive and so out of my price range that i don't know if i'll ever own it uh this book is in the thousands of dollars and depending on the grade obviously and it, it is just Amazing. This is actually the uh, first. This is actually the first issue of the Neil Adams Denny O'Neill team up on this book, and uh, this book is notorious for dealing with a lot of different uh, social issues. And this book here also features one of the most significant panels in comic book history. Uh, if you've seen this panel before, it really, really packs a punch and deals with social issues that were really prominent back at that time during the 1970s, as well as even some issues that are relevant in today's day and age. Giant Size X-Men number one. This is another force to be reckoned with coming out of the Bronze Age. Collectors, let me tell you, go nuts for this book. It is the first appearance of the new team and the first appearance of many beloved X-Men characters like Storm, Nightcrawler, Colossus, uh, this isn't the first appearance of Wolverine, but I believe it's the first time that he appears in the X-Men and, and, and joins the team. 
This is one book that is unfortunately ex expensive to get, uh, especially depending on the grade. However, it's definitely worth to add to your collection because this is one that will just continue to rise in value. Conan the Barbarian, number one. This book has been eluding me for the longest time. I absolutely would love to add this book to my collection. I love Conan the Barbarian. Unfortunately, it's well out of my price range now, uh, but if you have the funds and the desire to add this to your collection, I highly recommend that you do so. It is another significant Bronze Age key issue. I believe it is the first appearance of Conan the Barbarian in the Marvel Universe. If not, it is for sure the first uh, Conan the Barbarian uh, ongoing title, and it has Barry Windsor Smith art it is just, uh, it's something else. So definitely worth to add to the collection. Amazing Spider-Man number 129. Another one of the heavy hitters from the Bronze Age. This is the first appearance of the Punisher. And the Punisher is such a beloved character by comic book collectors. Uh, there's now a Netflix series uh, about the Punisher. And this is just one of those books that you will never, ever go wrong with in your collection. It is definitely one of the most significant books coming out of the Bronze Age. Again, very pricey to add to your collection, but this one for sure will continue to rise in value. I'm going to be talking about the next two books uh, together because they happen one after an, uh, another, and that is uh, Green Lantern, Green Arrow, number 85, as well as Green Lantern, Green Arrow number 86. These are the infamous drug issues. Marvel did a story that uh, predated these that dealt with drugs in uh, Amazing Spider-Man actually. And uh, a few months later they released these and these were much stronger, more powerful uh, drug stories. Drugs were a huge issue in the 1970s and uh, these two comics here got a lot of attention uh, from the mainstream and uh, continue to be loved by collectors everywhere. So definitely worth it to add to your collection. They are, however, um, they are not as expensive as Green Lantern and Green Arrow 76. So if you can't afford Green Lantern, Green Arrow 76, these are probably the next best thing. Tomb of Dracula, number 10. This is the first appearance of Blade and another book that I unfortunately do not have in my collection, but would love to own. Uh, I love Blade as a character. And I, I really wish Marvel would do a lot more with Blade. Uh, I know he, he's had three films. Uh, I would love to see more Blade films. Uh, but in terms of comic books, uh, not as many appearances in comic books as I would have expected for, for a character like Blade. But uh, definitely a huge character, huge issue coming out of the Bronze Age and uh, loved by collectors. You can't go wrong with this book here. Pick it up if you have the chance. It's You won't regret it. Secret Wars number eight. If you have a chance to actually read the whole Secret Wars uh, limited series in trade paperback form, I highly recommend you do because it's actually really, really good. But uh, Secret Wars is known for this gem right here. This is Secret Wars number eight. Uh, I believe it's the first appearance of the black costume and also the first appearance of the, uh, the symbiote uh, that eventually becomes Venom. Uh, Huge issue uh, for collectors coming out of the 1980s. Uh, definitely worth to pick this up. Uh, I remember when I picked this book up, actually, it was not, uh, it wasn't too expensive, but uh, I know that it is uh, steadily increasing in value uh, with no signs of waning. Uh, and I don't even have that high grade of a copy. So uh, you, if you can find a high grade copy of this uh, for a decent price, definitely add it to your collection because this, this book is just going to keep rising in value. New Mutants number 98, one of the great flukes in comic book history. And the reason why I say that is because the art here is by Rob Liefeld, who is one of the most polarizing artists in the comic book industry. Nevertheless, no matter what your opinion is of Rob Liefeld, he is credited as one of the creators of Deadpool, and he is credited with this book here, which is probably the biggest book coming out of the 1990s. Uh, I've actually read this issue, can't say it was the greatest story, but it is the first appearance of Deadpool, and this book is just steadily increasing. People absolutely adore Deadpool, they love him. He has awesome movies, he's had a lot of cool comic book series, and, uh, you will just never go wrong with this book. So 
get it now uh, while it's still under the thousand dollar mark now obviously higher grade copies will be over a thousand dollars but yeah definitely worth it teenage mutant ninja turtles number one this is one of those books that i do not have in my collection and i know i likely will never own this is probably the biggest book coming out of the 1980s and definitely worth it to add to your collection if you have the funds available again really expensive to pick up but this book will just continue to increase in value uh this is a little book that uh was done by a small independent publisher uh people weren't sure if it was going to do anything it was actually uh meant to be a spoof uh mutants being the the x-men because that was really uh popular at the time nevertheless this was meant to be kind of like uh, a parody and uh, it just exploded in popularity. There were only a few thousand copies, I think, that were in this print run, so that makes it very rare, and also another reason why it is super expensive. But if you get the chance, pick it up, because like I said, just going to increase in value. Silver Surfer number one. I think this is the only Silver Age book that I have on the list. This is the first Silver Surfer solo series. Um, nothing too significant beyond that, but uh, it is, Loved by collectors and definitely worth it to add to your uh, collection. It is a great book. I, it's actually a really great read too. I, I absolutely adore this book. House of Mystery, number 92. This is the first appearance of the Swamp Thing. And it is a book that just continues to skyrocket in value. I know I've been saying that a lot in this video, but these books here, I cannot stress enough how important these books are to the comic book medium and how these book how important these books are to collectors so if you get a chance to add really any of these books to your collection you won't go wrong because like i said these books here i am certain as a take it from a person who does not really follow uh the comic book market and definitely does not speculate these books will rise in value uh, a lot of times when i just kind of peek at comic book prices you know here and there once in a blue moon i see what some of these books that i picked up years ago are going for now and i'm just you know i i'm just in awe uh, how much they've uh, increased in value now again don't plan to sell any of them but it, it still feels good to know that uh, some some of the books in my collection are uh, you know not only a piece of history but also very valuable Amazing Spider-Man number 300. This is the first full appearance of Venom and what a book it is. Venom is one of the most popular villains, anti-heroes, whatever you consider them. Um, the movie with Tom Hardy, I, I liked it. I know some people that were kind of hit, hit or miss about it, but uh, I, I, loved, I loved that Venom movie and I know they're gonna be doing more uh, Venom movies. Just such a popular character. Great character, great villain, great anti-hero, and uh, collectors just love this book. Continues to increase in value, add it to your collection. I have another double whammy coming at you. I thought these books would best be spoken about together, and those are uh, Amazing Spider-Man number 121, which is the infamous death of Gwen Stacy, and the Amazing Spider-Man number 122, which is the death of the Green Goblin. These are books that collectors absolutely love uh these are super super key issues for uh the amazing spider-man again they are a tad pricey but uh, i highly recommend these books because not only are they a great read uh but they just continue to increase in value i actually got uh, a great deal on these books this this uh amazing spider-man 121 i got for dirt cheap just because it, it has water damage um it is complete um but uh but it is it is a little water damage and um, I, I love it. I, I think I don't even think you could tell that much that it had a little bit of water damage. And then this one here, I think I only picked up for sixty dollars, but this was like over ten years ago. And uh, I'm, I'm so happy to see uh, how much this has increased in in value. So definitely pick these books up. The Walking Dead number one, another book that uh, is very very rare and very sought after by collectors. I believe this book was published in 2001, 2002, something like that. Had a very, very low print run. Heck, it was even published in black and white, uh, but it just exploded in popularity and continues to be very popular uh, today. So I cannot stress enough how important this book is to the comic book medium and how important it is to comic book collecting. I personally am not a huge fan of The Walking Dead, but uh, I definitely would never undermine the importance of this book. 
Batman number 251. This is one of my favorite comic books of all time. Uh, this is a book that uh, has a classic cover. That's what's really key about it. Uh, it's one of the most uh, beloved covers from the Bronze Age of comics. But another reason why this book is super significant is, of course, it is Neil Adams' art and uh, Denny O'Neill story uh but it kind of portrays the joker as a uh dark you know crazy murderous character that he was initially intended to be for a while the joker got really campy and really silly but uh with this book here we see a return to the joker's darker roots so uh definitely a great book great read uh and I would highly recommend adding it to your collection. The last book on our list is probably the most expensive one on this list. And um, I didn't purposely put this last, it just, that's the way it ended up in my pile. But it is The Incredible Hulk number 181. And this is probably the biggest book coming out of the Bronze Age. It is the biggest book coming out of the Bronze Age and probably I'm going to argue and say the most valuable book uh, from the Bronze Age on. I mean, there are a lot of heavy hitters from the Silver Age that are very expensive, but the most expensive book that you will get after the Bronze Age is probably this one here. Uh, this one you're looking at, you know, thousands, I think. Uh, you might get lucky and get it in, in you know, get it in the hundreds. Uh, but it is quite an expensive book, especially especially in higher grade. First appearance of Wolverine can never go wrong with this book. Get it, get it, get it, because it's only increasing in value. So that about does it for our video today. I really, really hope you enjoyed it. If I made any errors along the way, please feel free to, to correct me in the comments. Like I said, I'm not a huge speculator of comic books. Do not follow the comic book market. Um, and some of my details about the books themselves might be a little hazy. So. So for sure, let me know in the comments if you uh, noticed any sort of misinformation. Also, are there any other books that you feel should have been on this list that were not? Please let me know in the comments. I know there are probably dozens of other books out there that you personally as comic book fans feel are important uh, to this medium. Until next time, this is Dante D signing off. I will see you all in the next episode.